Uh, praise God, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a blessed opportunity to be here. I'm a very simple man to catch, but also very hard to catch. <laughs> there are people who have looked for me for a year and they have failed to get me, but there are people who can get me at the call. Because sometimes it's not that you intend to be busy, but sometimes when busyness comes, you learn to draw priorities. And uh, the reason why I drove to Cathedral Foundation is because I think from the time I met you when you came to do a small presentation at the ministry then, uh, I was sharing with uh, some individuals here that I loved that they, they were thinking outside the box. There are not many people who are thinking outside this box. And uh, which box are we talking about? The box of predictability. I think once a person does not, cannot, or if, let me say, if, if a person is predictable, you will never attract. Predictability does not attract because it puts in the mind of the person who is supposed to be attracted that this is routine, this is duty, this is usual. There's nothing new. And where there's nothing new, there is no hope. Um, we have a very remarkable story as a nation, Uganda. You all know that. And I believe that we have a huge mandate to the world. And it begins from a spiritual perspective. Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, uh, we have a mandate on our lives that was ordained by God on this land. And because of that, it's like Paul says, it's by the very rule of measure to which we reach many. Don't ever think that you're going to go beyond the destiny uh, of the people and the nation the Lord has ordained you above. It doesn't matter how successful you go. If your nation has reproach, it's useless. You understand what I'm saying? So our history and story kind of individually tags to the history of this nation. And the hope of this nation is young people. Hallelujah. Um, I was sharing with somebody a few days ago, not far from now. I told him that if you look at just how far the world has gone, and I mean every sphere, you know, if you're talking of science and technology, you're talking of, they're calling it what, gene sequencing, for example. People are coding genes and changing them to think a certain way to avert diseases. You understand it? Artificial intelligence. It's almost unbelievable. I know that, of course, it's, it's going to take time for it to get to the level of a human brain, but there's somebody going there. You understand? It? Guys are trying to make Mars habitable. Hmm? And these are not Bible readers. They are people who are normal like you and I. You see what I'm saying? But they, 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 they eat food like you, they go to bed like you, they have brains like you and I. You see? If you go in the political, the systems that the world have built to sustain economy, it is overwhelming to even imagine. Technology is just a support function, like any other support function exists, you know? But the way the world has gone, the way the world has, has evolved, has adopted and mutated into this picture that we see, it's sad for me that the church has not advanced to that level. You understand what I'm saying? Christians have not, many Christians have, many have not advanced to that level. And so you, you, you ask yourself, okay, if the world has adopted artificial intelligence, what has the church adopted? Okay. What is coming from the church? Well, if at least you would say the artificial intelligence is coming from a Christian, because wisdom, they say, is the, is, the, is, is the mother of all witty inventions. I saw it's your mission, vision there. Hmm? then it has to begin with you. You understand what I'm saying? But here is the challenge, and I think it cuts across all of us here, and more so if you're found in, in Africa, um, or in a, in, a, in a wanting society like we've all been raised. It is easier to start from something than it is to start with nothing. You get it? Because 
creativity somehow is uh, throttled when a man has nowhere to begin from. If you have a camera, for example, you have somewhere to begin from to take a picture. But if you did not have a camera and you had to first build a camera to take a picture or a video, the challenge would be so big. In fact, for some, they would rather not make the camera or even take the picture because the end is the picture but they don't know how to process the camera and will never apply their hearts to processing the camera or even think to look for the brains that can process a camera you see like steve jobs i've read his story he wasn't the genius scientist he was the genius with men you know he knew how to work with everyone to get to the end of things you see and that's the beauty of, of life that all of us are gifted differently and i'll tell you the truth our stars are going to shine differently not every man in this room, even though we're working together, not every man shines the same way. That means not everyone has opportunities coming to you the same way. But they can come to you, they can become bigger, and you can be a success, or you can even fail. Many people ask me, hey, in Uganda, you, 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 thousands of people, eh? this 10, 5, 7 thousand people are watching. Recently we had a women's conference of 10 thousand. I said, this, this is just three years. You know, I met a guy from uh, Nigeria, he was asking me, you, you've done Fanero for three years because many it's inconceivable you see and if you look at my personal story I don't have a foundation that I began from no we, we began from scratch you see what I'm saying uh, there's a very powerful story that catches me every time I read the Bible it's the story in Genesis 30 chapter 30 29 and 30 the old, those two chapters there's a story of a guy they call um, Jacob Jacob serves a man called Laban. He was a diligent fellow. And diligence is a spirit. The Bible says, See, a man diligent in his work, for that man shall stand before kings and not before mean men. That means you attract the kind of men according to your level of diligence. If you're not diligent a certain way, certain people will never come in your circles. And it's amazing that diligence does not begin when men start to see you working. It begins where men are not watching. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it begins in that bed when you start to dream. When you start to think of ideas that you'll seek applications over. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the, 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 all of us were born with a gift. All of us have dreams. If they check inside you, some of you are where you're supposed to be. Some are dissatisfied because potential is frustrated. You're not where you're supposed to be. But whether you're where you are, or not supposed to be, it has not changed the fact that you still dream. That's why you wake up in the morning and left your bed to come to work today, isn't it? So, Joseph, Jacob, sorry, has fled from his brother Esau. He goes to his uncle Laban. He's a diligent man. Laban cheated Jacob's salary ten times. You see? And Jacob stayed working. The Bible tells us that when animals died, eh, Jacob used to pay for those animals. He counted it on himself. Why? Because his master had, encou had entrusted him with that area. It's part of the diligent spirit. In my ministry, I don't expect that a camera guy who has the ability to buy a bulb will come to me to ask for a bulb. I have entrusted him with that ministry. I have the money to buy a bulb. You understand what I'm saying? But you must know that the reward of business also comes with applying yourself to the thing you've been entrusted with. Because we are all stewards of things. And I'm not teaching things I've not done. No, I'm teaching things I have done. We made losses in, in the bank and we used to find ways of covering those losses because we had to be found to be faithful. You can do it, you cannot do it. It's one thing to have the ability to do it and not do it. It's another not to have the ability to. That's understandable. You understand what I'm saying? But if you can afford the battery in a camera, you don't need to call you know, the batteries out. You put the batteries. You know, there's a reward in that. And this is the stories that are older than us. Now, a time comes when Jacob has to leave. And he tells Jacob, give me my, his, his father-in-law, uh, Laban, give me my wife. Then they agree that the spotted and speckled animals are going to be given to Jacob. 
And in the night, the story tells us that Laban told his sons to pull out all, all, not even two, three, all the spotted and speckled animals. Mm. And the next day, Jacob wakes up and they are not spotted and speckled animals. He has served this man for more than 14 years. But he's not even willing to what? To pay him. And this man could represent the nation we are in. For example, that some people are waiting for the government to come through, Smanya leaders to create jobs for youth. What if they don't give them to us? We in the government. Eh? Yeah. Then you hear young people on the streets throwing stones. Eh? You know, Praise God. You what? They want to remove your teeth. These politicians are not going to come to hospital. When they kill you, they will not even bury you. You get my point, eh? If there is a need for the nation, let's pay for it. God will bring the leaders that we need if we are dissatisfied. But let them find us doing something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the beauty with this story, and that can connect with Kaseo as a foundation, he goes before, and then he gets trees. Green poplar trees, hazel and chestnut. And then he puts white streaks in them. And then when he puts those white streaks in them, he puts them on the troughs where the animals were drinking. And, and the, Bible, the Bible says that as they were drinking, they were looking at these troughs and they mated. And the animals that were mating, none, was them, none of them were spotted, none of them were speckled, none of them uh, fitted that description. The beauty of this story is that when the animals mated, they produced spotted and speckled animals. That was the beginning of the wealth of Jacob, like we know it. He grew to be a very wealthy man, but the blessing on Jacob was two things, diligence and what I can call that sixth sense, that instinctive thing, that innovative spirit, that thing eh? in him that prompted him to cut these trees and put spots on, I mean, sp lines in them, because by those tricks, these animals would produce spotted and speckled. How it happened, I don't know. All I know is magic happens when a man starts to innovate. Magic happens when a man becomes desperate. Miracles happen when a man becomes desperate. When a man becomes agitated and, and um, dissatisfied with his state. That's where true creativity begins. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the blessed people I've met in this world, the beginning of the greatest ideas were at their worst. They were their worst. So what might look like is your worst is actually the beginning of, of greatness. Amen. God had to wait for Abraham to be separated from Lot and alone in the deserts of Canaan. And he spoke to him and told him, for as far as your eyes can see, I have given you. He had to wait for him to get into that place. Jesus had to go in the wilderness for 40 days. And the Bible says he came back in the power of the Holy Ghost. That was when he started doing miracles. Paul, the apostle, who writes three quarters of the New Testament, the Bible says he separated himself from Damascus and went in Arabia. When he came back, the man was different. You get my point? Mm. That is why any innovator must value solitude. Mm. Because where quiet waters are, you're going to realize things become more clearer. It has to be the thing that drives you. You must love that tranquility of thinking alone when you're in your bed, when you're in your room. That place when you're before that computer or whatever you is and you're quiet. That is the most beautiful time for creation. Amen. Every Thursday. I lock myself in every Thursday. It's hard. To, if I go out, I go out for just two, three minutes or a few, one or two hours, and I'm back in that room. Why? Because for every service, I have to premeditate. It's a preparation stage. It's a preparation process because I need to minister to thousands of people. And now we're more than 50,000 people watch me every month. So to have the outcome line to produce the results that people need outside, I need a place of preparation. I need a place of silence and tranquility. I need a place of, 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 of solitude. Sometimes eh, every inventor and innovator learns to be alone sometimes. 
you just learn to be alone because you realize the moment you're alone, your brain starts cooking, isn't it? Mm. But to finish my idea and mind that I wanted to share, Jacob's produ Jacob produces something out of nothing. Jacob produces something out of nothing because in the animals that were mating, there was none that was spotted and speckled. That's how innovation is. That's how you guys are. That somehow, out of this, without the ability of spotted and speckled, you have to produce spotted and speckled. You get my point? Now, do you see how technology reconciles with, with the spiritual world? Do you see how technology reconciles with the church? Do you see how technology is interpreted by the scriptures? That's why you have God. Because, like say that wisdom, Sophia, the matter of her invention, begins with God. Some did not believe in God, but they mean that God did not shine it on their lives. Now probably what God is asking is, how much more you, who believe in this gospel, who believe in this word, who believe in this... If you look at the success, for example, of the Jews across the world, Zico Baga, I mean it's the, 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 the list. All of this, they say almost 40% of the most successful business people on the face of the earth have Jewish blood. It's bigger than just the brain to innovate. They have a covenant. The Bible calls them stewards to the mysteries. They are God's choice people. You see what I'm saying? So, they tell you that the, the guys who invented Uber, you read the guy's story, I hear him, but the guy has Jewish food. Amazon, Jewish food. Facebook, Jewish food. You understand? Eh? Even this Bill Gates boy I hear has like a Jewish food somewhere. You get it? So, his grandfather used to tell him to tithe when he was little. He used to quote the scriptures, the Lord will open the windows of heaven and bless you. Eh? That's why it's windows. You can't run away from spiritual things. You can't run away from the spiritual button. You, you, you get my point? So, for me even coming here was to tell you, we believe in how you're thinking. This is so outside the box. And uh, <laughs> like Jacob, you might have to think of ideas to put spotted spectacles. Uh, produce spotted speckled animals without spotted speckled parents. You understand what I'm saying? That means mm -hmm. you are on a demand to do the impossible. Mm -hmm. And I will be honest with you, science as we see it, even though it has become so popular with our eyes, it is actually the impossible. Because if you think about it, go back to how a mobile phone works. You know that many of you here probably can't even explain how a mobile phone works. Some of you here, your kanga, your idea is around making sure that people transact on <laughs> mobile phones. 900 million people transact on mobile phones. But you ask a person, how do waves leave one place encoded and decoded to this mobile phone set that you're holding? And you can't explain the science and math. But it's a miracle that I'm talking to somebody 3,000 miles away without any connection, physical. You see where I'm coming from? It's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. If, if my grandfather, and they wake up your grandfather, and they tell him that a mobile phone works, I remember how did it work? It's a, it's a miracle. Some time back I was reading about these guys who, um, I don't know whether you've heard of um, uh, the, 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 the latest mind on economies. Eh? It has now shifted. Uh, modern economics, eh? so they call it. Some guy died recently, he was called William something. And you've heard of how these guys come up with the idea of blockchain technology. Carl, I'm sure you, you know, me, I'm a preacher. But I'm sure you know what blockchain is. Eh? That thing is a miracle if you think about it. You, you get it, eh? It's a miracle if you even see that somebody sat down in their room and invented blockchain technology. How can that guy be poor? Mm -hmm. Do you even talk about money aspects on the guy who invented blockchain technology? It's not something that we can run away from. Yes, Bitcoin will fail. You know, cryptocurrencies might fail, but blockchain technology is not going to fail. The internet, who invented the internet? How much money has been saved and made also on the internet? You get my point, eh? 
Yeah, the future is going to come where people don't even need to go for confer for me for conferences in the US or where I saw something Cisco is trying to invent. I'm a lover of technology myself. Where people are just going to sit in offices and have very clear interfaces that they would need to be creating, uh, paying thousands of tickets on business class and first class and sleeping through hotels to have a meeting. It's going to be that few. People are going to be working from home and be as effective to save themselves from the travel of two, three, four hours away from home. Which two, three, four, four hours away, if you count for the next 50 years you live, you lose five, five years traveling. Yes commuting. It took me one and a half hours just to get here. You get it? One and a half hours just to get here because there is no way I can talk to Kafero guys without coming here physically. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, Banange, solve problems. Solve what? Problems. Solve problems. But again, like I told you, your Kafero Foundation story, the Lord told me, is exactly the way Jacob is. You're going to have to produce spotted and speckled animals without spotted and speckled parents. It's what the animals that drink from this trough see. As they looked at those, those trees, they started conceiving spotted and speckled. They understood what Jacob wanted. That means that the strongest, uh, the strongest uh, gift you have is the brains of the people the Lord is going to bring before you. And how, without the ability and DNA of the spotted and speckled, they are going to produce spotted and speckled animals. Miracles in technology, miracles in business, miracles in science, miracles in technology, miracles, simply miracles. It's what people are going to see. You're going to have to change the visions. You're going to change many people's mindsets to stop seeing a certain way. You're going to have to inspire young men to dream so big until it's even scary when they start speaking. You get it? You start speaking your dream and the guy runs away because it's too big. You understand it? And the, this whole spirit that I'm seeing here, it's a bunch of great brains. In just a few years, you're going to be so far. You get my point? You're going to be so what? So far. But it's going to be beautiful when even me as a part of the success story. I'm not <laughs> They are the ones to defy. I don't know. Has anybody watched a program called The Next World? It's, it's on DSTV. These guys are showing what is happening in the next 10, next 20 years. You heard in November they did the first brain transplant. Head to body. Banange Mukama. You think of the ethical questions of removing your head and they put it on another guy. You, you get my point? Eh? Now, you look at the future where these guys are going and the technology, they are inventing a pill that refuses people to grow old. Eh? Robots are going to become doctors. Robots literally are going to answer people, they check your temperature, they check everything, they scan your body, they do everything, they even give you the treatment, they monitor you. You, you get it? it, it it's there, it's a robot. You, you get it? I'm sorry, was it South Korea or North Korea? Well, literally, they are trying to make sure that every home has a robot. Every home. Would you get it? Yes. You know, the, the, the guy doesn't have one. But now, God, God prosper you. God prosper you guys. For oh, any reason, God is going to your He prosperous. Now, you guys are so called it. It's undeniable. You've even written history before the face of the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, those are the things that brought me here. Munange, the Cafe Foundation, gave me a seed. I did ask for it. We need a blessing. So, I'm going to pray for you guys. I have a long day. I have meetings at the office and I have an evening service today. I preach almost every day of my life and I don't regret it. You know? And I bless the Lord for that blessing. I've, 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 been, I've had a wonderful time to hear your story. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Cafero, this foundation. Thank you for the hub of innovation. Thank you for the cradle of invention. Thank you for the dreams and visions that are in this building and even for those that are not here. Thank you for the young men that are dreaming outside the box, that are not waiting for men to hand over uh, cheap uh, leaflets to them, but they are working with their hands and dreaming with their hearts and applying their minds. I, I bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless their bread and water. 
I bless their children. I bless their connections. I bless their networks, God. Bring people to fund these visions. They are big. Uh, that, that, that they cannot accord them to their own strength. And that's the beauty with godly visions. Godly visions can only take God to fulfill. Connect them with the right people, the right resources, at the right time, and at the appointed period. I pray that they'll go upward and upward only. That Cafe Rose ministry, as a ministry, will shine brighter and brighter in the technological, the scientific, the innovative world. It's going to be a landmark in Africa. It's going to be a light, a beaker of hope in the world. It's going to be an inspiration. Men are going to fly here. Of all character, of all nature, strangers will serve you. Gentiles will come to your light and kings shall come to your rising. None of you shall die. Amen. The Lord will sustain you and grant you long life uh, to produce that which he has ordained upon you by purpose. Yes. For me as a preacher, for you as a scientist and technologist, whatever it is, we all aspire to this one thing that in the end, everything we do shall have purpose. Amen. So I bless you. I bless everything from henceforth. I believe that something has begun here yes. that cannot be erased. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. God bless you.